Hi friends, I'm Father Kerry Walters, pastor of Holy Spirit American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. Perhaps the best living American philosopher, Thomas Nagel, once wrote that he not only disbelieves in God, he positively hopes that God does not exist. He does not want, he wrote, God to exist. So in writing this, what Thomas Nagel does is to go beyond merely expressing his intellectual conviction that there is no God. He also expresses his emotional and existential hope that there is no God. For Thomas Nagel, a truly horrendous truth would be the existence of God. Now that may not be a surprising sentiment coming from an atheist, but what may surprise you is that many believers might likewise think that a rock-bottom proof of the existence of God would also expose them to a horrendous truth. That, at any rate, is the theme that is voiced in a fascinating little novel, first published in 1996 by the French author Laurence Causet. The novel is entitled A Corner of the Veil. Here's the plot. A mythical religious order, the Casuists, that is obviously based upon the Jesuits, uh, discovers a proof that is absolutely indisputable for the existence of God. The people who read the proof are immediately overwhelmed with a sense of tranquility and completion and fulfillment. And so they're eager to publish the proof, to let the entire world know that the great question that has haunted humankind from day one, does God exist, has finally and definitively been answered. But what they encounter when they try to spread this new good news is something that shocks them. Everyone seems to be against disseminating the news. The state run government refuses to countenance the possibility that release of the news would be a boon to the public. And even more alarmingly, the church hierarchy thinks likewise. Let me read you just a couple of quotes from this novel that express the consternation of state and church authorities at the news that a definitive proof for the existence of God has been discovered. Here's one state authority speaking. He could see how within a few weeks the proof of God's existence could destroy the secular equilibrium. Because that equilibrium depends on the non-certainty of God's existence, the absence of proof of God's existence obliges respect for unbelievers. But the absence of proof of the non-existence of God obliges respect for believers. Here's another passage. Our complex, fragile economies will be turned upside down, a government man says. Dazzled by God, men will have no further reason to keep working to make the machine turn the way it used to. The primacy of economic matters will crumble. Ninety percent of human undertakings will look foolish, meaningless, pathetic. The ad man, the beautician, all the merchants of dreams and escape will close up shop. The arms merchants, all the more so. The only tenable behavior will be more or less what contemplatives do, prayer and frugality. I don't see research in general, and theology in particular, retaining the slightest importance any longer. An archaic economy will develop. Suddenly, money changers will close down, and stock exchanges throughout the world, and university chairs in international finance and business schools. Frugality and prayer will rule. Well, the claim here, of course, is that if we absolutely knew that God existed, the world as we know it would change. Our values would shift. Our priorities would be metamorphosed. We wouldn't worship the idols that we now worship. The problem is that we find those idols incredibly comforting. We do like to think in secular terms. We do like to bow down at the altars of success and power and prestige and busyness and money. 
if we knew that God existed, all of those would suddenly seem fragile and fleeting. And even though you would think that would be a great release for the individual, and it probably would be, for governments it would be disastrous. As one of the characters in this little novel says, chaos would descend. The church hierarchy is just as alarmed, as I mentioned, because if we could absolutely know that God exists, the church would be out of a business. The church would no longer be essential. What would now replace the church authority would be divine authority. Now, this is a satire, of course, but it's an extremely thoughtful satire that invites all of us to ask ourselves this question. Do we really believe in God, or do we just believe in believing in God? Do we really take our belief in God as the central one of our entire worldview, or is it one of those peripheral beliefs that we yank into the center every so often when it's necessary to do so, but which for most of the time we can do without? Would it be a horrendous truth for us if we discovered that God actually does exist if there were no longer any doubt or confusion on that issue. Cosé, in writing this novel, invites all of us to ask ourselves those questions, and the very asking of them can be quite uncomfortable. And that, I think, is one of the signs of their great value. So let me encourage all of you to get your hands on a copy of this novel, a corner of the veil, and ask yourself the question that Cosé asks. Is the existence of God a horrendous truth? I'm Father Kerry Walters, and this has been another Holy Spirit Moment. Thank you.